Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Mobile Application Tester. We are in chapter four talking about mobile application platforms, tools and environment and continuing ahead with the next segment of this chapter which is 4.3 Emulators and Simulators. As a part of this tutorial, we'll be understanding more on what exactly emulators and simulators can be utilized for and can be helpful for a mobile tester in order to test certain things which might be waiting for a real device to come into picture. Now, in the context of this particular syllabus, the term emulator and simulator refers to a mobile emulator and mobile simulator. It's not an automotive emulator because you do get emulator and simulators for many other equipments, many other devices, but these are specific to mobile as we are talking about mobile application testing. The terms simulator and emulator are sometimes used interchangeably, but incorrectly. So you need to be make sure yourself that what do you call it as an emulator, what do you call it as an simulator. People just say that it's emulator slash simulator. Now they are for different purposes and we need to learn that as a part of this segment. Getting started with the first one which is a simulator which models the runtime environment where an emulator models the hardware and utilizes the same runtime environment as a physical hardware. Now application tested on simulator are compiled into a dedicated version which is going to work in a simulator but not on a real device. So simulators are more of like you know model in loop where you create everything in just what you require in order to connect them and make them happen but it is more of like you know a very simple code at a very uh, ASCII level kind of thing which is not going to actually showcase as a user interface but rather return you signals stating that that yes I'm responding to you. So we will certainly test each and every component and simple programs being feeded in into the microprocessors and try to test if that particular part of it is really responding in this environment or not. But of course you want to start from here because you cannot afford a real devices that too many of them right at the beginning of the stages. Now that's where the simulator will be very helpful to get started early in the testing and without having the real devices in picture. By contrast, applications compiled to be deployed and tested on an emulator are compiled into the actual byte code that could also be used by the real device. Now, simulators and emulators are very useful in the early stages to cut short on your budget and also early stages of development as these typically integrate with the development environment and allow quick deployment, testing and monitoring of the applications. Now, simulators are sometimes also used as a replacement for the real device in testing. However, this is even more limited than the usage of emulator, as the application tested on the simulator differs at bytecode level from the application that it will be distributed for. Now, emulators are also used to reduce the cost of the test environment by replacing the real devices for some of the testing. An emulator cannot fully replace a device because the emulator may behave in a different manner than the mobile device it tries to mimic. So of course you may have some limitations on the hardware and the software and different other parameters which actually a real device has. For example, if you talk about running an emulator on a in a kind of an environment then which is a kind of laptop or desktop it does not have sensors it does not have a kind of you know camera and a lot many other things so it may not be appropriately displaying you all the outputs what you are looking for now in addition some features may not be supported such as multi-touch accelerometer and other options which i just added to you. and this is partially uh, caused by limitations of the platform used to run the emulator so it all depends on what kind of platform you're trying to run the emulator on and what kind of devices and uh, features and the option does it really have. Further to add more on this, we are talking about using emulators and simulators for mobile testing can be very helpful for various reasons. For example, each mobile operating system development environment typically comes with its own bundled emulator and simulator. Third-party emulators and simulators are also available to utilize them. 
Now a tester may use whichever emulator or simulator suits their purpose. So do you have to get started with a quick POC first to decide on what will be the best option for you to make use of and then you decide on which emulator or simulator you'll be making use of. Using the emulator or simulator requires launching them, installing the necessary app on them and then testing the app as if it were on an actual device. Usually, emulators and simulators allow the setting of various usage parameters and these settings might include network emulations at different speeds, signal strengths, and pocket losses, changing the orientation, generating interrupts, and GPS location data. Now, some of these settings can be very useful because they can be difficult or costly to replicate with the real devices such as global GPS positions or getting a signal strength by varying it like you know you traveling with a real device in a real location. But here using these simulators and emulators, you can certainly recreate that real-time scenario while within your premises by sitting in a particular corner. Now connecting to the emulator or the for the purpose of installation might require using client line tools, which is CLI, uh, such as Android debug bridge or android or for android and for connecting from within the integrated development environment as with xcord for the android studio so there are several options for iphone you use uh, or for ios you use xcode and android studio for the uh, android apps and lot many other things like that so we need to actually pick up the right set of uh, emulators and simulators in order to decide what features they offer, what can be the facilities, what you'll be getting in order to reduce your uh, budget in order to start your initial testing. Now, don't worry, you know, it does not mean at any point of time that emulator and simulator can minimize the cost of getting the real devices. Now, you have a different approach to do that. We covered that as a part of chapter one, where we decided to understand that how exactly your strategy will be defined in order to select the real devices but before that a lot of things can happen on the emulator and simulator well that was all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning